Hi. When you're playing chess game, a lot of times in the middle of the game you have to decide whether the end game you can get by force, whether it's winning, drawish, or losing, so in order to decide whether you have, should go there or not. And lots of these end games are either pawn endings, bishop endings, rook endings, queen endings, or, and so on, or minor piece endings. But there are some end games where material is uneven. They call I would we would call them uh, mixed end games. For example, queen versus rook, or rook versus knight, or queen versus two minor pieces, and so on and on and on. So those end games are just important. End games are just important to know, as you can say maybe regular rook endings or regular pawn endings. They are very important to know. It's important to know not only how to play them. It's very important to recognize what they are. Is there a win or is there a draw or what, whatever the result may be. So let's start to look at some theoretical positions. White has queen and king and black has rook and king, king and rook. Now, over 90%, maybe 95% of these positions are win, winning for white. Queen basically always wins against the rook. There's some very few exceptions are something like this, where maybe white king on d2, queen on d3, and black king on e6, rook on e5, and if black can play rook d5, then of course this position doesn't qualify as winning. But there are some little more subtle positions that are not winning. But first, let's see how we can win normal position king and queen versus king and rook before we get to exceptions. The way we do it, if we get the same position as we just looked with king d2, queen d3, and black's king e6, rook e5, we have to drive black's king to the back rank. This is a relatively easy task. And we're going to do it now. Suppose it's white's move, then black cannot play rook d5. So we have to drive king back. So in order to drive king back, there is no way to drive this black's king back with just a queen. We need help of our king. So if we play queen g6 check, king d5, and king d3, you see that black cannot separate rook and a king. For a, so, for example, rook to e6. Now we go queen f5 check. And you can see that black is forced to play king d6. Because, for example, if rook e5, then black loses at once after queen d7 check, king c5, and queen d4 check. So, after queen f5, king d6, we can go king d4, and you see that black will be pushed to the back of the board. So king d, uh, in this position, if rook e7, queen f6, king d7, king d5. This is, uh, this is an easy win. Now, if black tries to play rook e1, and now rook is in a great danger. So what we can play is queen, uh, maybe queen f5 check or queen f7 check. It does not really matter yet. 
and after king d8, maybe we should, what we should do, we should bring the king closer and make sure black does not check us from the back forever. So. And queen g5 check, and on king d8 back, uh, on king d7, now queen g4 check, you can see now that after king d8, black will lose the rook after queen h4 check and on rook e7, king d6. So basically what I'm trying to do, we are not going to go through every step of this process, how to drive black's king back. Black's king will be driven back one way or the other. And once we do that, then we win easily. Let's get one position, very most critical position of this uh, end game. White's king on c6, and white's king, queen on d8, and black's king on a7, and rook on b7. This position is an easy win for white. It's white's move, and white has to win. Now, before we see how we want to win, we have to realize that the best way to win this position and the easiest to get the same position we already have with black to move. So if white can lose tempo and get the same position, we will see that in this position black does not have any satisfactory move. It's a total Zugzwang and black loses the rook. Let's see why. Rook cannot stay near king. Well, uh, on rook b8, we have mate in one, queen a5. King cannot come to a6 because after queen c8, rook is lost. So rook has to go away from the king. And if rook goes to h7 or b1, white has a way to win this rook. Example, after rook h7, white wins this way. One of the simplest way to win, queen a5 check, king b8, queen b4 check. And you can see now that black cannot go queen c8 because mate queen f8, so black comes to king to a7 or king a8, it doesn't matter. Here, white uses stairs to go back to b1 and take the rook on h7. The way you do it is queen a3 check, and after rook a7, we have queen f8 mate, so king has to move to b8. Now we go queen b3 check, not queen b2, because then may, black may go king c8, and we don't have h8 square. So if we do queen b3 check, black will be forced to come king a7, or king a8 is the same thing, king a7. Now we go queen a2 check, and after king b8, we go queen b1 check, winning rook and the game. Now, in the original position, if black went rook b1, we have the mirror image of the previous win. We go queen e7, king a8 is queen f8, and if rook b8 return, then queen a3 mate. Queen e7, king b8, queen f8, king a7, and again, queen f7 check, not queen g7, because king a6, and we don't have a1 square. And we go queen f7 check, king b8, queen g8 check, king a7, queen h1, queen h7 check, and rook is lost. So this is the pattern you have to know. 
actually you don't have to remember all, all these checks you have to remember one thing you have to make black king you have to separate black's king and rook and once you did it then there is a way of winning black's rook and winning the game so that's the main pattern how you win with king and queen versus king and rook but there are a couple of subtle exceptions and there is one right here as a white king on b3 white king queen on c6 and black's king on b8 and rook on b7 white is in check this is a draw this is a draw because white cannot escape checks perpetual check if white stands on a and b lines uh, files then you constantly give rook a7 and rook b7 check with the black. Black can, white cannot step to c file because then you play rook c7 and win black's, white's queen. But if white tries to approach black's rook, then black has lucky solution. Rook, king b5, rook b7 check. King a6, rook a7 check, king b6, and now you see that you don't have rook b7 check because queen will take on b7 with mate, but you have lucky rook a6 check. And now if white takes the rook, black's rook, then it's a stalemate, and if white retreats, then simple draw after rook takes queen. So this is one of very rare occasions when white cannot win. In any other cases, you win with king and queen versus king and rook by driving back black's king to the back row and then creating mating net or making black separate king and rook and winning the rook. So that will cover in all entirety this mixed ending uh, position one, king, uh, king and queen versus king and rook. Now let's look at a little different type of mixed ending. Suppose king and rook versus king and bishop. Now, what can we say about this position? This position is a draw. Whether it's rook versus bishop or rook versus knight, it's always a draw unless black's king is cornered. Black's king is in a corner. If black's king is in a corner, then we have to know few subtleties. Not every position is win. There are some positions are still draw. Example, suppose black's king is on h8, white, uh, black, white's king is on f5, white's rook on b7, and black has a bishop. Now, which bishop do they have? Do they have a light square bishop or dark square bishop and here is the answer if black has a light square bishop it's always a draw what black has to do is to know one simple pattern black will play bishop g8 and there is no way white can ever make a progress black will go bishop to g8 and even if white goes king g6, black will move the bishop anywhere practically, not to hang it. But bishop c4, for example, and white cannot make any progress. On rook b8 check, black will simply go bishop g8, and there is nothing for uh, white to do. If white mo makes waiting move 
with a rook on eight rank, then this is a stalemate. So this is draw. However, if we just move all this position one square to the left towards queen side, white king on f6, black's bishop on f8, and black's king on g8, you can see that this is an easy win for white. Uh, because black's king has the move, and then white simply takes the bishop and makes next move. So when we have this cornered king position, it's very important to see what color is your opponent's bishop. If bishop is uh, dark square in the same color as the corner where king is, those positions are very often lost. And if king at corner is the opposite from the col col color of the corner, opposite from the color of the bishop, then this is a draw. Same rule, almost same rule, goes for king and rook versus king and knight. It's almost the same rule but with slight some differences. We get cornered king. If king is totally cornered, then position is uh, lost for black. Uh, well, actually, if knight is cornered, I'm sorry, that's the difference. If knight is cornered, for example, white rook on a7, king on f6, and black king on g8 and knight on h8, this is lost because black's on the move and it's total rank. Now, if we put a black's knight to any other square, then position is a draw. Well, of course, if we put king on h8 and knight on g8 with king on g6, white's king, it's also lost because you can see that knight has no square and Black is going to win the knight very next move. But if we put king on f8, black, black king on f8, and knight on g8, now no matter how white's pieces stand, this position is a draw. The interesting way, this is very often, it happens in the tournament game, and uh, uh, it, it comes from rook and pawn versus a uh, rook versus pawn. For example, here is the example. White has uh, king on e5 and a rook on a5. Black has king on g3 and pawn on h4. Black to move. Black goes h3. White gives rook a3 check. Black goes king g2. White goes king f4. This is a win for white. Black goes h2. White plays rook a2 check. It looks like win. This is not a win. This looks like win and it looks like it's over. If black goes king g1, white plays king g3, and now black has to make knight, promote to the knight, because if black promotes to the queen, then rook a1 mate. But when black promotes to the knight, then white goes king f3, and white wins. However, here is that's what black has to know and after rook a2 check instead of going king g1 black plays king h3 and this is a draw so this is little addition to how sometimes we get rook versus knight or if position was like if white has king on f4 
and uh, rook on a4, and black has king on f2, and pawn on g2. It's white's move. Now you can tell that this is a draw, because after white gives rook a2 check, king f1, and white plays king f3, black promotes to the knight check, and this is a draw. How to draw it? It's very easy. You can, you almost never can go wrong, because if white goes king e3 now, you see this is not a corner position, so this is a draw. The way you play it is you have only one move that does not lose instantly, and it's always enough to draw. Knight h3, and amazingly, white cannot make significant progress. For example, if they go rook h2, we can come back, knight g1. If they go rook f2 check, king e1, it seems like black is in a lot of trouble. It does seem so, but black has always enough to draw here. If white here goes, for example, rook f8 back, knight h3, and this is a draw on rook h8, knight g1. This is a draw theoretical known position. So that's what you have to know with just a rook versus minor piece.